like theta can just like go right back into them. It's pretty cool. Amazing technology there. But honestly, for me, by lo like looking at my phone I'm immediately, because I'm again, I'm super prone to the stress cortisol response. I can't look at, at my phone. The minute I look at my phone or even my watch to see what time it is, it's like I'm immediately up. Hi, ladies. Welcome back to another episode. I hope you enjoyed our previous episodes sharing badass breakthrough stories of real client success, women leveling up despite hormone havoc, achieving their health, fitness, physique, running goals, amazing inspiration that has been provided in a few past episodes. And I know I've been sharing a little bit more about this phase of life that I'm currently in, which is the heart of a move. Um, it is relocating without my spouse um, as a military spouse, really heading into a crazy chaotic phase of life. So honestly, today I'm hopping on in a solo episode and sharing kind of from the heart of the chaos, how you can use six simple steps to level up your physique and fat loss goals, despite tremendous stress. So I don't think I know like a single person who's at our age, like 35 and beyond in our forties and fifties, that isn't in a tremendously stressful phase of life. So we can just be honest that there is a whole lot of life happening for every single one of us. And while the context is incredibly different, like some of us may have aging loved ones. Some of us may have like myself, like a crazy military move and all sorts of things happening with kids emotions surrounding that. Um, a spouse who travels, it is a lot. And we have others who are incredibly career-driven, trying to juggle things like travel, family, and their fitness. And being a community of women who wants more as we age, who wants a fit tone physique, who wants to ditch the hormone havoc and the stubborn body fat and level up our fitness and performance, whether you love just to look fit and toned or you're one of my dedic fellow dedicated recreational women runners who's trying to do it all, this is a lot. So today I wanted to share and break down, I was thinking through my day today and I was like, wow, I'm getting through this. I'm seeing really great results in my own physique journey because as I shared in past episodes, I was either going to level up or lose it. So I chose to level up. So here we are a couple like weeks later, how's it going? <laughs> right. Let's check in. Let's check in on this journey that I, you know, shouted out to our entire podcast community. How's it really going? Well, I'll just be honest. Um, things are just with our, the home that we purchased. It is insane with um, trying to sell our current home. It is, um, I guess I didn't quite expect some of the reaction of some of some of the reactions, like my kids are having, um, a lot of unexpected like tragedy outside of our own family. Um, that's just like incredibly heavy hearts. And so it's like, Whoa, this is, um, this is a phase. This is certainly a phase that team Valentine is going through. So today I'm going to share these six simple steps that you can put together as you are in the heart of your own physique, fitness, or fat loss journey. So how did I start my day? This is so, so critical is starting with like morning mindset. So those of you who are in our program, you have our quick, simple morning mindset strategy, highly encourage you to use that. That is going to hack that cortisol response, set you up for success and focus on your journey in our Badass Breakthrough Academy program. For those who are not in that program, if you have a go-to morning mindset strategy that you use, go for it. But I would encourage you to think through your day, like what truly like lay out your day. It's stressful phase of life. You've got to lay it out. Like what are your priorities? What is going to set you up to make today a great day? It is really important to have that crystal clear. Is it going to the gym? Is it um, making sure the kids get to school on time? You have a work, you have one, two, three things that you have to get done for work. You've got softball after dinner, you know, all these different things, you, um, you know, have a dinner out with friends. You want me to look at the menu ahead of time, things like that, really setting your day up for success and just saying like taking the overwhelm on it out of it and saying, these are the things I need to do. So that is really, really, really important that you feel organized within the context of each day. Cause otherwise we lose it ladies, right? It's so, it's like got to plan the day 
get a, make the most of the day or the day's going to get you kind of thing, right? <laughs> so let's set ourselves up for success first and foremost, each and every day. Number two, this one, I did this and it, it was like, I hate this so much. Meal prep, even if you hate it. <laughs> so I really, because I work from home, like I don't love meal prepping by any means, but I found myself like just going for convenience. I'd be like, Ooh, this is a chocolate chip cookie dough bar. You know, this one's from Costco. Like they're really pretty clean. Like you can get away with eating them kind of thing for your health and hormones and gut health. It's not that terrible, um, of the choices. And so I'm like, Oh, you know, this is, um, breaking through wellness food list approved. I think I could have this, you know, no, 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 no. Do not grab the quick convenient foods, right? It's going to leave us starving by the time we get to 3 PM energy is going to crash. We're going to be ravenous. We're going to have all of these symptoms and we're not going to sleep well because our body's angry. It wasn't nourished. And at this age, we can't afford to do that. We really can't. It just shows up as all of these symptoms that are crazy. So we need to avoid that and we need to set ourselves up for success. So I did meal prep and here I am on it's Tuesday and I'm out of my meal prep food because I didn't do a ton of it given we were busy. Um, so I got to do it again tonight, but let me tell you by, I just, I'm in the heart of trying to create a new resource for our program it involves a ton of critical thinking because I really love giving the most to our community of women. And I want us to have amazing resources. And it's like when one woman comes into the program and she's stuck with something, if that's a resource that I can create for everyone in our program and provide access to it, like I want to do that. Right. Because ultimately as females, I want to create the world's greatest program that has us, you know, we, any obstacle that comes our way, we know what to do. So in this specific, um, strength training program that I'm creating, it's around when we have knee injuries or that high hamstring tend not to be like, how do we come back from that and actually ditch it for good? Because PT gets us so far, right? But then how do we actually get over this hump and come back and progress and really ensure that we don't have to deal with these injuries for the rest of our life? Like no one wants the nagging knee pain. No one wants that high hamstring issue that just never goes away. It's a pain in the butt, literally. <laughs> so with that, I need incredible mental clarity and focus, but for me, it's like this overwhelming, daunting task. And I've only got so many hours before I have to pick up the kids and here I feel super stressed. So I did not want to grab the meal that I had prepped, but I thought ahead, I th you know, that future thinking is really helpful. If like, when you go to open that fridge, you think, okay, like I know what I want right now, but what do I want like this weekend? And this weekend our pool opens. Like I want to not feel bloated and crappy. No one wants to feel that way at the pool. Like let's all be honest. And so what I do on Tuesday, it's going to show up on Sunday. I better stay committed to the course. So for me, I thought ahead. I was like, okay, I know what I feel right now. I'm super stressed. I want to go with convenience. I want the chocolate chip cookie dough protein bar, like make protein pancakes, do something delicious or kind of fun because I'm stressed and there's a lot going on and blah, blah, blah. Like I could make all the excuses in the world. But I just thought ahead to that goal. It's like, nope, level up, Louise. And I went for that nourishing food. I took it outside. And despite having a busy day, I sat outside on my porch in the sun and I took deep breaths. And I focused on gratitude for the nourishing food. Like this food is going to shape my body. You guys know what nourishing food does for your body. You look kick ass when you eat well, right? When we eat these whole foods that nourish our hormone, metabolism, gut health, drive optimal fitness results, we will achieve them, but it's that daily decision point. And unless we have that food prepared or like an exact idea of what we're going to eat, oh, it's so easy to fall off the rails. And then I, I love what Ariel always says. She's like, you could feel like you're psychologically dieting, but you're not physiologically dieting. So you could be making all of these like healthy food choices and still kind of restricting but it's not organized, it's not in a plan, and it's not set, setting you up for success to drive specific results. And so unless you have that structure, you could be restricting, and then you kind of like go off the, rail, the rails for like one or two meals, and maybe it's that weekend meal, or maybe it's that lunch, you kind of just said, screw it, in the heart of the stressful week, and you feel like you're doing so much dieting, but you're not seeing any results. No one wants to be there right? And no one wants to make those quick on the fly meal choices all the time. And then at the end of the week, not see anything. 
in terms of your progress in your journey. So meal prep, even if you hate it, it just set me up for success. I sat down with this beautiful meal at my gut healthy foods, my chicken, my asparagus, like all the things that are just going to like really help my body lean out. And it felt good. It didn't taste that great. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, it's all right. It's good. It's, you know, your, your taste buds get used to it. It's not the same as something delicious, but it's also that chemical cascade. Like the minute I get that delicious cookie dough bar, I'm thinking about like taking my kids to ice cream, you know, like we're a little stressful, Zach's away, like, let's go have a party. And you, you know, you guys know, you guys know exactly what that feeling. So slippery slope whole nourishing food, setting yourself up for success, stay on point with your plan. For those of you who are in our program, I know we are all in the heart of like leveling up, wanting physique changes, wanting to see performance gains, saying screw you to perimenopause hormone havoc. Like it takes being dialed in. And we've had a lot of conversations in our group calls around this. Like how do we realistically make this work when we have a trip to an amusement park all day, when we've got kids field trips, when we've got travel, when we've got summer um, happy hour after happy hour. Like it's a lot of strategy. So again, those two things I just mentioned, setting yourself up each day with exactly what you're going to do and then having your meals prepared. It's really hard to screw up your day and to fall off course when you have those two things done, right? Not that complicated. It is simple, but it's not easy to do. So start there, ladies. The other thing, when we are talking about fat loss and leveling up physique, which when we want to see physique changes, we want to what build muscle, right? Build muscle, burn the body fat. And we often think, oh my gosh, I have to do it all. I have to get in my cardio. I have to get in my strength. And then when you're super stressed, cardio is oftentimes incredibly counterproductive. So in case you have not listened to previous podcasts, like even though this podcast is a ton of runners that listens to it, and I'm a dedicated runner myself, and I always want to perform well and work on my speed. Um, I, this morning, I was again, feeling very stressed and overwhelmed. And I dropped the kids off to school and I was like, okay, I actually like wanted to do like sprints this morning. I was like, I'm going to wake up and do sprints. I was like, I ate well last night. I'm like, I'm so freaking ready. It's Tuesday, track Tuesday. We always have it. Ann and I here in Wilmington. And it's like, nope. Anne's out of town, damn it. Like I, I didn't show up at the track because I have to stay confined to my home with the kids. So it just didn't work out that I went out and did my sprints. And so here I was in this like inner dialogue, like, what do I do? And so I went to, I'm like, I have to start with strength. Strength will help me run faster. It will help prevent injury. It will help me lean out. It'll help me look and feel amazing. Strength is how I protect my hormones, my libido, my metabolism. Strength is my longevity. So I got to kick ass in my strength today, right? That's going to drive the physique and the fat loss. What's not really that important? The cardio. And I say that because most listeners of this podcast love cardio. We are runners or we, you know, have a, a you know, our walks that we love to do. We're like pretty good with cardio. It's not really an issue, right? So I got the strength workout in and I felt good. I gave it my all. But then when I went to run, I started to feel really kind of sluggish. I just felt the weight of the stress. And when we're in that point, ladies, a lot of times as runners, we think like, oh, running is my mental clarity. Oh, I should run even further to process whatever I'm going through. And when we have those competing physique and fat loss goals, we have to like take it a step back. I know you've heard like Julie in that Our Badass Breakthrough episode, you've heard Ariel and I and Amy discuss this idea, like you got you to just rein it back. So I ran two miles today, two miles. I felt like, womp, womp, womp. but for me, like I love going out. Like I, I have to do like a minimum of four each time, right? Like where it's for me, it's like drives me nuts. Um, but really it's just like, no, if I overdo the cardio, first of all, overstressed, my body's more likely to do what? Be ravenous, gain the body fat, be overstressed, push out fat in my midsection due to cortisol overload inflamed because running can be very inflammatory. It's just not going to work. And so it's not that I can't run tomorrow, but I got to set myself up for success today with, you know, excellent sleep, eating right, keeping stress low so that I can show up with energy for tomorrow's run. But on a day where my body's like clearly talking to me, got to cut back. 
got to cut back on the cardio or it will be counterproductive. So I got in my joy filled two miles in the sunshine and called it a day. So I know that might be news to your ears. That is a strategy that changes age 35 and beyond for sure. But it is the women in our program that are able to embrace this concept that crush it. And by crush it, I mean PRing in their 50s. Like one of our uh, clients just ran her half marathon for her 50th and she's in a fat loss journey. She's in a physique journey. She um, wanted to PR. She was combating knee issues. Listen to her body. PR'd her half marathon by 15 minutes. You want to talk about obstacles that she overcame? Like that is freaking amazing. And it's like every day women in this program are defying the recreational running odds. And I, it, I am like incredibly pumped and thrilled and so proud of them and proud of what we've built so that you work with your changing physiology and not against it. You can do all of these things, but it's not probably looking like you thought it would, right? Like all these strategies you're hanging on this podcast, you're like, what? This does this makes sense, but it's not what I thought. Like, this is not what I've been told or this is not the training plan my running coach gave me. Or, you know, like there's a lot of outdated methods and diets and nutrition programs out there, ladies. So brace, brace yourself for this podcast as you come along for the journey. And today, when speaking of your stressful journey, really prioritizing your strength training, you're going to be just fine in your fat loss journey. And when you get to that point where you're like, okay, I feel really good about my new physique changes, feel really good because I've ditched the body fat, whether whatever journey you're in, or if that's you know the same journey for you, you can go right back to really pushing the miles and getting into the heart of a training cycle and having those long runs and being very structured. But even in something like the heart of a training cycle, really watching that stress overload, it is so critical. And it's such a fine line. And so if you are looking for support in navigating that and really optimizing your performance, physique, ditching the hormone havoc, all of that is very important, which we specialize in our program. So we welcome you at breakingthroughwellness.com. All right. So that strategy was cut back on cardio, kill the strength, right? Physique and fat loss, bam, watch it come your way. All right. The next one, which can be the most challenging is decreasing your stress cortisol response. So again, here I am in the heart of my day. And I was trying to start working on this program. It's like, okay, I'm just going to knock it out. Like, I know how to do this. I've been a strength and conditioning specialist, exercise physiologist, working in PT, all the things for years. Like, I'm a published injury prevention researcher. Like, I can do this. All the shit I'm trying to say to my, no. My husband's calling me with things at the other house. Like, it's just a lot. And so when I sat down and I tried to have mental clarity, it was like, I can't even swallow right now because the anxiety is up to my neck. Like it's just that something, an elephant is on my chest. So what did I do about it? And I I know so many of you listeners to this podcast get the same exact experience, whether you work in a cubicle and it's like, ah, all these emails, project due, I can't freaking think. I have a lot of clients that work from home. They have their own business. Like staying on task and getting into deep work can be very hard. So what's the hack in the heart of stress? Because this stress cortisol response, especially when paired with something like sitting at a desk, it's a really great path to belly fat right? Stress cortisol response, cortisol pushes out where belly fat. So, and that's oversimplification. Yes. But for context of learning in this podcast, let's say that's what happens because it does. Um, so what you want to do about that is rather than sit there and try to force deep work or completion of a project, um, try to force mental clarity. I honestly, what I wanted to do ladies, (laughs) those of you in my program will laugh at this, I wanted to have caffeine. Like for me, I know that I need to cut it off at like 1030 or I can't sleep at night. I'm a slow caffeine metabolizer. It's, and I'm so prone to the stress cortisol response as someone who's naturally anxious. And those of us in the heart of our hormones changing age 35 and beyond, mostly we are very, very prone to caffeine influencing the stress cortisol response, which is why you hear so many people say, oh, don't have caffeine. 
well, we just hack it according to our female physiology with strategies in our program. But I could not go for the caffeine. I could not go for the caffeine because it was it would directly inhibit my sleep. It would make me feel more anxious. It would make me feel more hungry. And you guys know what that feels like, right? You've got the caffeine, you're running around, whether you're like a physical therapist who go, 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 or you're sitting at a desk and you're trying to get the work done. You're like, ah, caffeine, caffeine. At least I can drink this while I have to do this crappy project, right? No, that is counterproductive. And I know that sucks, but there are alternatives first and foremost, which I know I talk through with many ladies in our program, but what can you do actually about this? Let's not talk about products, things that you can use. How do you hack your physiology? How do you hack the stress cortisol response in order to increase mental clarity, complete the deep work, prevent the belly fat and feeling like an anxious mess? What I did and what you can do is simply stand up and take a lap around the block. If you are not in working from home, go for a lap around the building. If it's downpouring rain, go up and down the stairs in your building. We have to move. When paired with nature and being outside and taking a deep breath and thinking of a few things that you're grateful for, like actually force yourself to name three things that you're grateful for, you can hack your physiology. Gratitude is the number one underrated biohack, by the way. But you will shift yourself from that parasympathetic, go, 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 super stressed out state to parasympathetic, which is relaxed, mental clarity. Stress is low, so is belly fat. No. <laughs> so with that, by pairing your walk with gratitude, very important to do that little hack. The other thing you want to do is by moving, understand what's happening in your body. I like to reflect on what's happening in my body because then I'm like, okay, no, I know what's happening. So of course I have mental clarity and I come back ready to knock this thing out. What you will do is the motor cortex of your brain is right next to the creative and problem cent problem solving center of your brain. So when you light up one, you light up the other. By going for that walk, lighting up the motor cortex, because that's how you move, you will automatically light up and activate that creative problem solving center of focus for your deep work. You will come back calmer. You will come back in a physiological state that promotes your physique and your fat loss goals, you will come back and knock out your task in which you will feel amazing because you are a brilliant woman who just felt really stressed, right? So now you know that that is actually going to empower you in a very holistic way. And it doesn't take a lot, right? Just make it 10 minutes. Um, for me, I took about 15 minutes because I was really feeling stressed. So I just was like deep breaths, you got this girl, like come back. Like I focused on the, the mission and serving the women in our community because I, it's like, I came back from my patellar tendon issue and I come back from so many, like, you know, I always say, my doctors always say I heal like a super freak. Well, I'm sick of healing like a super freak by myself. Like I want to bring my girls at breaking through wellness with me. And by continuously providing these resources, like we are creating an arsenal to make women, recreational runners and fitness lovers, absolutely unstoppable. And I know we already have industry leading results, but it's like, I'm reflecting on what that, those results actually mean, like what that does for a woman, like someone who I care about so deeply, who's in our community. And so hopefully your tasks at work or what you're trying to do in completing your projects, you can focus on that mission and that vision and get pumped too. Because I know most of the women who listen to this podcast are incredibly like heart-centered practitioners or um, very much into serving at their highest level. I mean, because you want to show up at your highest level and physically, mentally, all the things um, in the gym, in life, in the bedroom, in your family, at work. Um, and we talk about unlocking that next level. So that little hack and continuously trying to bring down that stress cortisol response throughout your day. That's just one small example, but we talk through this all the time. And the more we can understand how our female body works, like we can't undo that knowledge. So then we can continuously apply it. And when you're in our program, we talk through all of these things in like coaching sessions, you've got the modules where you learn it. So you practice it over time. 
like we take it one step at a time. So it's not overwhelming because by practicing it and applying it and having those lessons learned, screwing up, realizing what works best for you, it's an incredible journey where you can truly be unstoppable. So here in the context of talking about this goal where you want to level up your fat loss and physique and stress is through the roof, stress does not have to bring you down. It's going to be there, but now you know how to hack it. So hack that stress cortisol response. All right. Two other things that are key to your success here in our steps. Step number five, let's say the hardest stress in the reality for most of us is we are running around after dinner. Whether we've got kids or grandkids, we are running around going to watch them play sports. We have got multiple tasks that we have to complete. It is insane in the dinner hour most of the time. Now, I talked previously about how even in the heart of those chaotic moments, we still have a family dinner. So you can go back to our ripple effect episode where we share all sorts of strategies around empowering your family to have this love of fitness and relentless self-care and self-love. But in the context of it's insane, you've got goals and what do you do about dinner? So if dinner is prepared, if your dinner is prepped, like let's say you know that you're good with lunches, but where you really need to meal prep is that dinner. Well, I prep both lunches and dinner um, just because like meats and carbs are hard to prepare sometimes. So I'll have those done, like the potatoes, the the salmon, the um, rice, the, those types of things I need to have prepared ahead of time because then I just like throw in the veggies and my healthy fat and I'm good to go. But when you are in a cut phase or you're doing a little bit of calorie restriction in order to drop the body fat, it can be challenging, right? Because by the time you get to that evening hour, you're like, oh, I'm so hungry. If if you're in a fat loss phase or you've been, you're in, for some of the ladies in our program, you're doing like our little detox week there, like you are in a lower calorie couple set of days. Like it doesn't, it isn't easy to be in a calorie deficit. And that does, it does require that you're in some deficit days when you're trying to see physique changes. So the strategy that I use in the heart of those chaotic moments, and I've been sharing within our community of women is dividing your dinner into two. So let's say you have specific portions in our specific lean out and fat loss coaching. Like you have a very dialed in plan. So what you want to do is you want to divide that into two. So I will have my half of my meal, I'll make it, and I will eat half of it before the kids' sports. And when I come home, I know I'm going to be hungry. So I make sure that I have the rest of it. Because what I found is in my state of stress, I would eat dinner early, run the kids around and come home and be like, oh, no, they want to eat. And I'm not picking at their stuff, all those BLTs, the bites, the licks, <laughs> the, the, the tastes, they're getting in the way, Right. Before you know it, you're not making any progress in your fat loss or physique journey, and it's frustrating as hell. So dot, you can divide that dinner into two and be good to go. So that strategy there is very important when you get into the heart of those chaotic evening hours, which let's be real, is most of us. The final strategy that I just want to share today is making sure that you are prioritizing sleep. Sleep is the heart of everything. And if your sleep is suffering, your body is going to fight fat loss so much, especially at this age, and you will be in the hormone havoc. So make sure that you're prioritizing your sleep. You are trying to keep your sleep and wake time within the same hour window as much as possible. Your hormones love that. They need that at this age in order to be optimally made. So we work through a lot of those nuances in our program. We have all of our sleep hacks. Ladies, if you are in our program, go back to our sleep masterclass, go back to our 10 simple sleep hacks, highlight a few of them that you can use to support your success. Don't forget about those resources. And for the listener of this podcast, ensuring that you are looking at your sleep, you're getting at least seven hours. If you're an ultra runner, you know, technically you should be getting nine. Isn't that insane? <laughs> I don't know if I know any ultra runners who are actually getting nine hours of sleep because you got to wake up early and run. So you're actually getting more like um, waking up at three or four to get those runs in. But, you know, um, per science, that's ideally what ultra runners should be getting, which is is like crazy. But if you can do it, my God, do it, girl. 
um, we have all sorts of like nap hacks and things like that in our program. So really ensuring that that sleep is on point. Uh, it is part of that foundation for successful fat loss because you could be doing everything I just said. And if you're not getting good sleep, your body is going to fight it. So if your results are a little stuck, it's like, "Eh, we've got to really work on sleep. So I'll share that. um, I actually said something incredibly simplistic in a coaching session the other day, and the woman shared that it was such a game changer for her. So I will share that with you today. Um, Did you, have you ever woken up with that racing mind at like three or 4 a.m.? Now there's many root causes why women wake in the middle of the night, which we've talked in past episodes about stress cortisol response, caffeine timing, blood sugar chaos, hormones out of whack, uh, your holistic wellness lifestyle habits. Like you could be doing cold plunging or sauna use at the wrong time of day. Like all these things that we're told are good for us. If we're not like really looking at pairing it and matching it to our female 35 plus physiology, absolutely screws our sleep. In addition to things like hot flashes and night sweats, which come down to your meal composition and carbohydrate timing and types. So a lot of key factors go into why we wake. But in the instance of this one woman, she was waking just because like stress and it was the racing mind. It's like, I, I got to get up. I got to do all these things. Um, and so I told her, I was like, you know, one thing that I do, cause I'm like that like classic high achieving woman who just wants to wake up at three and knock out work and loves it. Cause I love my job. And I like have to force myself to sleep, which is probably sounds very odd, but it's like a real thing I have to do as someone who loves what I do in the world. Um, but with that, I, I told her, I'm like, you, I just take this nice deep breath. And I say, there's nothing you have to do right now, except sleep. There is nothing you have to do right now, except sleep. And when I do that, it works for me. And there are a lot of other little hacks you can do. Like there's something called binaural beats. Look it up on YouTube, put some earbuds in. Game changer in terms of hacking your physiology to get back into those deep sleep waves. Like Theta can just like go right back into them. It's pretty cool. Amazing technology there. But honestly, for me, by lo- like looking at my phone I'm immediately, because I'm again, I'm super prone to the stress cortisol response, I can't look at, at my phone. The minute I look at my phone or even my watch to see what time it is, it's like I'm immediately up. It's it's the worst. I could literally hear like techno music in my head because I'm just like, oh, I'm so excited about making a resource or <laughs> I don't know, writing client email about the root causes of her issues. Like I've got serious issues, ladies. But with that, I can't, I know I can't look at the device, so I can't use the bunny roll beats unless I'm like really having a hard time falling asleep. And so with that, I have to like do it myself. I have to lay there, take the deep breaths and ensure that I'm cool. Like sometimes if I'm overheating, like that's going to hack your physiology so that you wake when your body wakes by one to three degrees, you're screwed. So you got to cool your body down. That's actually the physiological mechanism by which you fall asleep, cooling your body. So I might get up and get like a glass of ice water and come back to bed. I often have to use the restroom. So it's like I am up and walking around, which also sucks because your body's moving. So it does not want to go back to bed, but I come back, I cool my body off if I need to, because I'm like a freeze baby. So I always love having a million blankets, which is very counterproductive. Um, so making sure you're cool in your environment can be a game changing hack. But with that, it's that simple phrase that I shared with her. And she was like, that changed the game for me. So maybe it'll change the game for you. Who knows that mantra that go to like, no, there's nothing I have to do right now except sleep. And there is nothing you have to do except sleep. If you want to lose fat and chisel away your physique. So, I mean, that's the other thing too, is like, I want to look hot at the pool. I want to look out to the pool, you know, like whatever it is. They're like, I want my husband to say my ass looks better than ever. Like whatever it is you have to use for your mantra, like make it fun, make it specific to you, own it, whatever means the most to you. You absolutely got this. Stress is going to happen. It is this phase of life. And the more we realize that, especially the women who come together at Breaking Through Wellness, like we are all goal getters. We are all super stressed. We are busy, busy, busy. You know, it's like you got, it's like got goals. Yeah, we do. We've got like 50 million of them. And so this strategization and these little simple steps 
compiling them all on top of each other. Like I just designed badass day, right? You could do it too. I am in the heart of the most stressful phase of my life, but it's not going to get me. I refuse to let it get me. And I know you're feisty. If you're listening to this podcast, you are fierce. So design your day accordingly. Know these strategies, write them down. Meal prep, even if you hate it. <laughs> I know it sucks, but do it. Um, and a lot of people will use like the factor meals. Um, there's a couple other like local ones to different communities that women in my program use too. Like go for it if it's a nourishing whole meal and it's just convenience. So meal prep, even if you hate it, if not, hire out <laughs> with, with your meal prep service. Number two, mindset each morning, write out your day, organize it. You got to organize it, right? Define your day before your day defines you. That was the quote I was trying to think of earlier. And the one we use in our program, define your day before your day defines you. Number three, cut back cardio, kill the strength. In the heart of those stressful days where your body's saying, oh, hell no to the cardio, is it going to get you? Is going to want to put the fat right on you. So make sure that you cut back on the cardio. That's where communication with your coach for the ladies in our program is key. So we can talk through. Let's not use that as an excuse. If you're kind of the one who like, I don't really get my cardio in actually Louise. Okay. So we're not going to cut it all the time. Make sure you're getting at least like 30 minutes, three times a week. But for most of us runners, it's like, oh, I got um, the minimum recommendations in a day or two. So yeah, we're, we're, we're good right? We are good runners. With that, you want to make sure that you decrease your stress cortisol response. You learned multiple hacks today, deep breath, pairing it with gratitude and going for that walk to gain mental clarity, motivation, and come back a badass. The other one, dividing your dinner into two. If you're finding dinner to be stressful, if you're finding that you're getting hungry at that time of day, divide it into two as needed. You're still eating the same amount of food. You're just breaking it up and no, it doesn't matter how late you eat it. Let me say that again. When you are in a deficit in a fat loss phase, it does not matter how late you eat it because you're already in a deficit by eating it. You will not put it on as body fat. Get that out of your mind, right? The last thing you need to do is wake in the middle of the night because you're hungry. So if you need to divide it into two, you own it girl and know that you are working with your female physiology. The last one, sleep. It is a priority. You've got to find ways to make it work. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but it will inhibit your progress if sleep is not a priority. So with that, if you are on a journey of doing your darndest to try to chisel away a fit and lean and feminine physique, if you want that non-bulky look, if you want to own looking hot as you age, it's okay to say that out loud, ladies. If you are in a fat loss journey and you are feeling stuck. You want crystal clear plants, like literally just hand it over to someone to say, tell me what to do and I'll do it. If you're good at following a plan, you will thrive in our Badass Breakthrough Academy program. So I encourage you to reach out because I can share all the strategies and tips and tricks, and you can do all the research in the world. But if it's not com all coming together specific to you, kept simple, low stress and sustainable, it's not driving very great results, is it? So I know there's plenty of listeners out there who are stuck because you ladies reach out to us, join our program, and we are thrilled to have you a part of our community. So if you are looking for that type of community of women coming together, rising above it all, chiseling away the physique, ditching the fat and the hormone havoc to unlock your next level, age 35 and beyond, you know where to find us at breakingthroughwellness.com. Make sure that you share this episode with a female friend who is doing her darndest to unlock her fit physique and ditching her fat and all the hormone chaos. Because the more that we share this with others, the more that we have other women who understand how to work with their changing female physiology, really matching their nutrition, their fitness, and their holistic wellness strategies, you can do this together. You will be motivated. And I know that a lot of what you learn here is different than what you've heard in the past. So the more that you have friends that understand what you're talking about, who are in this journey with you, the better your results will be. And we see that time and time again in our community, the more that we are just like active, sharing meal ideas, sharing what's working, talking through challenges. It is 
so crucial to have community. So whether or not it's just like one friend that you like listen to the podcast together and you talk about it and what's working and what's not, or you're sharing it with everyone, make sure you have that community. And if you're looking for one, you know where to find us. With that, ladies, I am wishing you so much success as you level up, chisel away your physique and ditch the fat despite all the stress. You got it. And of course, your friendly medical disclaimer, no information on this podcast or provided through any of our services should be used to diagnose, treat, prevent, or cure any disease or condition. Please always seek the advice of a trusted medical professional, such as your doctor, as needed. We are collaborative here at Breaking Through Your Wellness as an active member of your team when we work in one-on-one coaching services only. With that, we are wishing you a vibrant, healthy, and high-performance day, finding all the information you need to unlock your best with less stress.